first talk today is uh, Anila Beck, who is visiting Tom and my group, and Anila is normally doing a PhD at DTU, mm -hmm. Institute for DTU Bioengineering, but also as part of a Center of Excellence called Chemist, mm -hmm. which is uh, run by Lone Graf uh, out there, and they uh, they zoom more in the media, so it's less community focused, but they are very, very <coughs> detailed when it comes to understanding specific microbes and, and what they do. So yeah. that should be a lot of stuff here that's of relevance and interest to to other people doing hologenetics. So with that, yeah, and okay. you can introduce yourself on it. Yeah. Just... So uh, yeah, as uh, Morten mentioned, I'm a PhD student at the. Uh, at D2 Bioengineering, and I'm affiliated with the uh, Center for Microbial Secondary Metabolites. And uh, so today I will talk about, uh, or briefly talk about two studies uh, that try to uh, unravel the impact of how secondary metabolites, microbial secondary metabolites are able to shape uh, bacterial microbiomes. And uh, just to to show off this picture over here, that is uh, from our latest uh, in, in instrumental recruitments, which is a multi uh, um, uh, MSI or mass spec imaging of uh, two bacterial colonies that is uh, interacting uh, together by um, microbial secondary metabolites. So that is quite cool. Um, yeah, so at the center, uh, our overall aim is to unravel the natural role of microbial secondary metabolites. And since uh, Alexander Fleming uh, discovered uh, penicillin um, from an agar plate, the main perception has been that these secondary metabolites is um, medi mediators of microbial interference competition and they are antibiotic. Um, but what we, we still don't know is that what are their true roles in, in nature and do they have other functions um, besides being antibiotic? So in order to study this, uh, we of course have learned a lot from mono and co-cultures or simple se experimental setups where we also have gotten uh, some mechanistic insights. Um, but if we want to know what is actually happening in, in the real world, we need to move away from this very simple system to capture the complexity that we find in nature. Um, and uh, I will uh, talk, the two studies I will talk about is, is going on in the artificial system and one that is ongoing now in the natural system in, uh, conducted in Yuling Harbor as more than mentioned. So the first study um, involves a target organism. We have the marine uh, alpha proteobacteriophyobacter uh, species, and it has been well uh, studied for its uh, probiont uh, probabilities in aquacultures. And, um, and because it has these uh, probiont uh, abilities or host protectant abilities is most likely due to the, the, the secondary compound or secondary metabolite it produces called tropolytheic acid. And this seven member uh, ring consisting of an ester and a carboxylic group and a disulfide bridge um, has these antagonistic, antagonistic um, activities in high concentrations. But actually, when we lower the concentrations in sub-inhibitory concentrations, we see also that it can act as a signaling molecule in program sensing, and also that it is a weak ion chelator. And uh, we find this uh, few bacteria in nature often associated with the microalgae, um, and also uh, uh, forming, a, or it is a strong biofilm forming um, uh, surface colonizer also in marine harbors. So in this project, we wanted to, uh, to investigate if and how t the TDA producing feedbacks and HEPAs uh, affects the assembly of a semi-natural microbial biofilm community. And in order to do so, we set up an experiment where we uh, cultured the wild type, uh, the TDA producing feedbacks on agar plates. Uh, and in the liquid medium together and a parallel or in parallel, not together, but in parallel with the, a TDA deficient mutant. And then uh, 
it was the culture a suspension was incubated with these clean stainless steel surfaces uh, to get uh, biofilm attached to the surfaces. And after a while, we then transferred these biofilm coated surfaces into new beakers, as you can see, uh, for example, in this picture over here, uh, together with the, with the natural seawater and all the microbes that comes with that. And uh, also we had a control where we have just clean surfaces to compare the effect of the treatment. And then we incubated uh, over 10 days and we, uh, we took uh, samples at different time points because we know that the metabolic interactions change over time. And we also took, besides uh, by just capturing the biofilm, we also took from the planktonic suspension. And then we did the DNA extraction from this and used the 16SV3 with 4 uh, amplicon sequencing to, um, to uh, analyze the microbial composition. And we used ASVs aggregated to genus level in this case. So what we saw was that, uh, um, that by treating uh, the system with these few boxes, we saw that 12% uh, of the microbial compositional variance was explained by the treatment compared to the control. But the actual uh, Feobacter uh, inhibitors capability to produce TDA was uh, around 2% compared to, to the mutant. And we saw that time had the largest effect uh, on the uh, microbial variance and also um, as, to a small extent, the spatial organization, whether it was sampled from the biofilm or in the planktonic suspension. Um, yeah, so we could see that uh, most of the genera that was, uh, was significantly uh, differential, uh, differential um, abundant between the uh, mutant treatment and the wild type treatment was found at day four. And we saw that Specific genera uh, within the proteobacteria, uh, these fast growing heterotrophic bacteria, they were reduced, which uh, previous studies have also shown. But we also saw that slow growing genera of the bacteriodatus was increased in, uh, in relative abundance by uh, the capability of Feobacter to produce DA. Um, and even though these sequence studies doesn't uh, tell us whether they uh, this was an effect of the actual uh, promotion of these bacteria by the TDA uh, presence, or whether it was a tolerance uh, towards TDA, we cannot tell from these studies. Um, but at least we saw an increase uh, or a positive effect on some, which suggests that um, maybe TDA is not only antibiotic. Uh, and then finally, we had the comparative co-occurrence networks that uh, predict that Feobacter inhibitors to become a keystone species um, only or solely by its capability to produce TDA compared to the uh, mutant in these uh, microbial uh, communities. And also that um, it was positively correlated with the, some flavor bacteria and only a few insignificant genera were directly correlated with the mutant. Yeah, so this was very briefly uh, my pre, uh, second uh, manuscript and paper on my PhD. Um, and now what I'm, I'm here for is to do a, a new project or an ongoing project where we want to move from the artificial system in vitro to actually a natural system uh, in Yulinga Harbor. <laughs> and we want to study the secondary, how secondary metabolites globally uh, could be involved in this biofilm succession. And uh, Specifically, I'm here to learn uh, metagenomic uh, analytical methods. Um, yeah, so briefly, uh, the background for, for this biofilm succession is that we have, if we uh, submerge clean surfaces into the natural seawater, we see that more and more bacteria will adhere or colonize the surface. And in the end, we will have higher organisms and proteins coming and uh, make this microfiling as we, we know from boats in, in harbors that is a pain in the ass for <laughs> sailors. Um, but let's assume that, that most interactions in microbial communities are negative and mediated by antibiotic secondary metabolites uh, in interspecies competitions. Then we ask, 
uh, are microbes more aggressive in high populated communities? And we will then expect to see an increase in the overall gene uh, genomic secondary metabolite per OTU over time. Or do we uh, see that micro this microbial community as simply as a function of least differentiation and peaceful coexistence? And we would see the opposite. To investigate these two, we have uh, set up a uh, experiment in Yuling Harbor where we have these small cages that contains, contains these small uh, bio elements of biofilters that normally are used in wastewater treatments. And then we have sampled over a summer season last year. Um, and from e each uh, sampling point, we did DNA extraction again, and we used the meta taxonomic barcoding or amplicon sequence approach again with the 16S to, for bacterial diversity and the 18S for the eukaryotic diversity. And then to capture the, the antibiotic or secondary metabolite genomic diversity, we target the adenylation domains found in these non-ribosomal peptides, gene clusters, and they are one of the major classes of uh, secondary metabolites and are often explored for their antibiotic activity and novel natural products. Um, and finally, I will use the shotgun metagenomic sequencing if, to sort of get a more functional um, profile of what is happening otherwise, and maybe also to get the, to take, uh, to know if uh, we have a niche differentiation over time and to be able to predict uh, which kind of secondary metabolites we actually have uh, by using the anti smash software. Yeah, and finally, uh, I will just mention a thanks to my uh, main supervisor, Lone Gram, and Natalie for being part of this letter uh, um, study in Julian Harbor. And then my uh, two co-supervisors, co uh, Mikael and Mikkel, uh, and then Jakob and Morten for having me here and helping me out for um, with the metagenomic stuff and uh, Tom Gilbert as well. I actually didn't say when I introduced you because I think it's not very polite to talk about other people and you I can't <laughs> hide the bonus fact that <laughs> if any of you know who the ground is, it's not really important, but her uh, grand granddad. Greater grandfather yeah, was the guy who actually named that's where the name of grand positive and the grand negative bacteria come mm -hmm. from. So, so it's, uh, yeah. it's, a, it's not an insignificant heritage. Yeah. But, uh, that's quite cool. Questions for Panita though. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. So, in the first study, when you had was there a hand? Caroline? No, I was just curious if you have any indications of uh, which hypothesis you're going to go with. Like, uh, uh, actually, yes, I think the first one, so uh, that we will see more negative interactions as uh, density rises in the community, because that is at least what previous have been explained in soil communities um, that most uh, interactions are negative. We'll see. <laughs> Yeah, I also have a technical question. When you did the sampling, at what step did you go? So in Yuling Harbor, so the uh, um, so we did a thing a half meter below surface. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, in that half a meter, because I don't know that bay very well, how close are you to the bottom of the? I think it's three meter of depth, or two or three meter depth. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I was thinking, based on your figure, where you're showing the bottom of the sea, mm -hmm. that's like where the biofilms are mostly created. And then later on, you have like this environment of other macroorganisms. So if you take the samples in only half a meter mm -hmm. of depth, how do you know that what you're portraying and analyzing represents the bottom? So, yeah, but we are not uh, aiming for what is representing the bottom. Okay. Uh, like in that, yeah. yeah. So, but it's just we know that the, if you go to any harbor over a summer season, that you will see that you have a actually most microfouling in the surface area where sun 
or there's most light uh, because of most being uh, seaweed and microalgae. And then, uh, yeah, so that's also in the case of this mm -hmm. uh, experiment. That we cool. saw. And then another uh, nerdy technical question. So TDA, mm -hmm. is it a bit like cytophores? Mm -hmm. Does it, okay. Yeah, well, it's, yeah. It's just it has cytophoric uh, abilities, but yes. we don't think that, it, that it's the main no, function. No, no, no. I was guessing that since you wrote weak, but. Yeah. Okay. No. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Great presentation. Thank you. Sarah? Uh, it's very nice. Uh, I have a small technical question. Uh, the case of the small pieces you put in the tube, what type of material is made for? It was plastic. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we just took normal plastic bottles from the basement that normally we use for <laughs> other stuff, and then we drilled a lot of holes in it. Yeah. I just wonder if it has different materials to affect the bulbing creation. Yes, also it also has an effect on the secondary. Well, we know that the, or like, so the material has a lot of effect on which, uh, on the microbial composition that will involve eventually. Uh, and of course, we couldn't uh, capture all the different kind of that. So we just chose whatever we had. Um, that was possible. And then because we have treated all the samples with the same material, then we will get rid of that, you know, effect, we believe, at least. Yeah. Just going back to the, the sampling, I was wondering, so you said that you found a spatial effect and the inference is that the sample, the, the, the microalgae sample at different spatial places it produce different metabolites or do you think that you just sample different densities yes well? um so, so maybe the in the, in the biofilm you sample more molecules of microalgae yeah so of course there's major also uh, compositional variance between uh, plantonic living uh, free living bacteria what is um yeah, living there, and then those that actually can form a biofilm. Yep. And that was also, I think, why we saw an increase of the bacteriodetes, because they often form a biofilm, but they are also uh, well, well known to be um, heavy uh, polysaccharide degraders. So I think they, they come and maybe establish on top of the few bacteria biofilm and establish there, and then they sort of help by, how, helping out by right. degrading all kind of stuff, which you don't see in the in the planktonic suspension. And I think also that TDA's role is more related to what it does in, on a biofilm level than it is in, in the planktonic suspension because secondary metabolites produced there will just diffuse into the surroundings, not having a target if they in, if it, the case is yeah. for a target. Yeah. Yeah. Very good talk. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's Thank Vanilla again. Thank you.